Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I am the Common Sense Guy, or some people would know me better as Jason. How are you all doing today? And yes, we are going to be talking about Sargon of the Cad, and yes, we are going to be talking about fucking UKIP, because they're all on the go at the minute, and it's something that I really want to express my opinion for as well, to be fair. And I wanted to start this video by saying that some of the information that I've got from to be able to get to where I am and the understanding of where I am as well, though I did kind of have the prefaces beforehand, was from a video from a YouTube creator called Porcelain, and was done an amazing job of being able to cumulate all of this sort of evidence and this, uh, let's just say, interestingness of Mr. Akkad or Carl Benjamin. Very interesting, especially his uh, early years on the internet. Which we are going to get into. We are going to get into. And the reason why I'm doing this video, by the way, is not because I dislike Sargon. It's not because I dislike UKIP. I am a UKIP member, believe it or not. But at the same time, I do actually believe that Sargon of Akkad with UKIP is a bad business venture for UKIP. It's a great business venture for Sargon of Akkad. Great. Massive exposure, media presence, people that think similar to him are going to go and vote for him or going to look at his YouTube channel and he's going to go strength to strength. UKIP, on the other hand, already had a core sense of people that were already trying to vote for Brexit. They already had their ideas that they wanted to do. Unfortunately, for people that are Sargon of Akkad and Carl Benjamin and himself, with all the controversy that comes with it, some of it warranted, most of it not. You kind of have to think to yourself, is it worth it for UKIP? Because all that it does for UKIP is completely and utterly, really, put off the common voter from actually choosing UKIP. Now, UKIP in itself had the demographics of having the people that were on the fringes of the Conservatives and the fringes of Labour anyway. So, if they were trying to attract more people from those two parties, which is what they have to do if they want to be any sort of political force, rather than just political gain in the newspapers and in the news in itself, if they actually wanted to implement change, they would need to draw more people from those two parties. Unfortunately, Sargon of the Cad is not that person. Now, I'm not trying to say that I don't want him to run. I don't think that there's any reason why he shouldn't run, personally. I don't think there's any reasons. But... If you were to look at it from a purely, let's say, political point of view, or how the perception of the politics would play out, it's not a great look for UKIP to have somebody that has been quoted as saying, I wouldn't even rape you. And yes, yes, Sargonites, yes, the wouldn't even is the very important part. I do get that. I do get that. I understand that he wasn't endorsing rape. I do understand. The point is... That he knows himself that he's going to be completely and utterly smeared throughout for all that he's done throughout all of his little YouTube career history. That's the problem. Yeah, okay, you could argue that the media shouldn't be going after him and smearing him, but they do, and they are. That's the problem. Because when they smear Sargon, they smear UKIP. Because that's the reason why they tried to smear the person. Because then the credibility and the character of the person then affects the party in what it does. Now, believe me, I know it shouldn't work this way. But we are humans. We are hardwired to make quick, snappy decisions. We don't always go out to get informed. Especially when it comes to principles of voting. Though Sargon of Akkad should know this. Especially considering that he's been fighting against it most of his YouTube career. So, going into this video, because this is only just the introduction unfortunately, and it's already around about 5 minutes to 7 minutes long. Which is great! Really want to hear me talking, what you want to do is you want to hear what's going on. And the reasons why I think that it's a bad idea for him to be running as a UKIP MEP. Now, with that being said, let's get into the video and actually understand the reasoning why I think this. Let's get into it, shall we?
we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna just sarge on because that's what it's all about when life hands you lemons you just sarge on you just sarge on of a cod you when life when you when life's got you down you don't know who to turn to you turn to sargon of a cod sargon of a cod made me everything that i am today rational atheist migtow libertarian when i saw sargon of a cod i knew that I had found my guru for life who was going to help me. And here I am. Thank you, Sargon. I'll be honest, I don't mind admitting it, that I wasn't quite <laughs> as indoctrinated as this uh, gentleman. I won't say that I was quite as indoctrinated. But at the same time, I do feel that I put a lot of stock in what Sargon of Akkad actually said without actually realising what he was saying and doing research into what he was going at. Now, I do want to preface this or put a caveat in of saying most of what Sargon says is pretty well researched when he's in a video. It's normally pretty interesting and to me it seems to be right on the button most of the time, which is one of the reasons why he has such a following because a lot of people are accepting the message in which he is saying. The point that I'm trying to make there, there are a hell of a lot of people that will not question what Sargon says, that will not question what my lord has stated. And I think that's a very dangerous place to be. It's almost on the verge of a religiosity, almost on the verge of occultism, to actually not even take any criticism of the person and or any criticism of what the person says. Because for some reason, Sargon of Akkad is above criticism, regardless of what people may or may not have as a separate opinion of him. But that's just an opinion, right? So before we get into the crooks and the arguments and my opinions of Sargon of Akkad and why I think the way that they do and what's going on and everything else like that, I want to use an excerpt from Porcelain's video, which the video is linked down in the description box below. Please give it a watch. It is very, very informative. It is very, very neutral. There doesn't seem to be too much of a biased either way. There does seem to be a little bit of maybe um, a bias towards Sargon not being as big brained as he says he is and dopamine is needed. But apart from that, he is very, very good at balancing what's been accused of him and what hasn't and what's real and what's not so he's done a really good job on that i really suggest that you go and watch that video as well which is linked down below and if you don't want to have a look down below i will put it up top for you to be able to just click on it and have a look at the card but i'm going to use this excerpt because it shows you uh an aspect of sargon of a cad and it's a running theme but let's carry on and I will let Porcelain continue of what he has found out. For a deep thinking sage of such scholastic reputation, Carl Benjamin's academic background is actually less than impressive, having achieved grades well below the national average when graduating high school. His schooling was comically cut short, having failed two of his three courses in further education. This included a botched attempt at passing general studies, a popular subject amongst low IQ teens otherwise engaged in nitrous balloon parties and the nonchalant sharing of genital disease. Now, before everybody gets all butthurt about the idea of me putting this in here and him going there as some sort of ad hominem attack or something like that against him, it's to preface the point that later on he will go on and say to people, oh, you should read Locke, or oh, you're not on my level, or oh, you don't understand these things, you don't understand this. I think it's very important for somebody that, like myself, I'm not highly educated, I never went to university, I'm studying at college at the minute, as some of my subscribers would know, but that doesn't make me massively intelligent and it doesn't make me massively better than anybody else, especially when it's conversations where we're not specialised on at all. This is where I have the problem with Sargon. He does not have the capacity to be able to sit down and actually have an intelligent conversation. He's always trying to get an angle or a got you or a victimhood complex. You're picking on me or you don't like this or you don't like that. And this is one of the things that really tore me away from Sargon, to be honest with you. Especially with some of his debates that he's had with the alt-right. 
But the reason why I've left this in more importantly is to show you that the humble beginnings of Sargon of Akkad and where it goes. Carl's childlike imagination was once again abuzz with fairy tale adventures. Along with Rush Jarvis and Giuseppe Constantino, the trio would create their very own tower defense strategy game, Necromancer. I'm Russ. And I'm Carl. And we're two thirds of other world software. We'd like to present Necromancer, something we like to call a reverse zombie apocalypse game. You and the Necromancer are risen from the grave and determined to start the zombie apocalypse. To achieve this, you have an army of mindless shambling zombies that you can raise to do your bidding. It won't be that easy though, as against you are a group of survivors and heroes who know what you're doing and are coming to stop you, and they are good at killing zombies. If you like the sound of this, Please pledge now to help kickstart the zombie apocalypse. By some miraculous act of a god Sargon the Skeptical as on many occasions debunked, over $8,000 was raised for the project, with pledges up to $500 for the privilege of naming characters and receipt of a unique forum rank. Unfortunately for the backers, very little evidence of any sort of playable product would ever surface. I think this is a very important aspect to Carl or Sargon of Akkad's historical characteristics and his character in general this says to me and this is only opinion and everybody has one that's why they all stink but my preface on this is that this really does show that he is more interested in trying to make a quick buck than he is actually trying to physically do something he was able to take eight grand to be able to put a game together with three other two other people sorry and was trying to do something with it, but even to this day, that eight grand has never been given back to anybody, and somehow, miraculously, there has never been a game that has ever come out from Sargon of Akkad. To me, this says a lot about his character. Meanwhile, Sargon's first real foray into political campaigning saw him lead a petition against what he perceived to be the social justice indoctrination of university students. There is an anti-feminist YouTube user by the name of Sargon of Akkad, and a few days ago he recently made a petition addressed to universities, no, not a specific university, not even universities within a specific location, just universities generally, um, okay good luck with that, uh, calling on them to temporarily suspend uh, what's called social justice courses. Now this in itself is actually a, a decent idea. Unfortunately for Sargon of Akkad, the implementation was, uh, for lack of a better word, childish. Lacking in perspective and direction, should we say. You can't really put a petition that is just universities in general. There is no direction to it. Especially when you're so ambiguous in the titling of Suspend Social Justice Courses. Suspend all, yes. In other words, ban them. Now, before we go any further with any sort of point making or anything else like that, I would like to put a caveat in that... I'm not really interested in the idea of social justice courses. I don't think that they benefit anybody, and I don't think that they benefit the person that's even taking the courses. I am not defending the social justice courses when I say this. But my god, this was a stupid idea. The ambiguity of a social justice course. How do you define that in a petition? How do you define what you want to talk to universities in general as such? Where do you pin it? Where do you send it? Where's the idea of it going? It makes no sense. But most importantly, I would like to add this bit in. For all of the talk that Mr. Sargon of Akkad likes to put into his, should we say, channel, he is always of a free speech advocate, at least, or in the idea of not banning things and having small governments and whatnot. This in itself is a complete and utter contradiction of what his principles, in general, are supposed to be. I want to ban, but I'm not going to use the word ban, I'm going to use the word suspend until we can find out what we're going to do with it, and then we're going to ban it. This is the reasoning why I started to shift away from Sargon, 
because I saw that he was not a man of the principles that he set out that we should be, or he should be preferably. He does not follow those rules. But yet, let's continue with more hypocrisy. Specifically, libertarians seem to have an issue with this, which I found very perplexing. And I heard some very strange arguments from the libertarians in favour of not banning social justice in universities, sorry, suspending it until it can be assessed and reformed. Yes, I wonder why libertarians, in which you have said a couple of times, Sargon, especially when you were first getting into politics and things like that, that that was your idea. You wanted very limited government and you wanted the government not to have too much force or say in what's been going on in the real world or whatnot. And there you are, physically advocating for the government to step in, ban people's speech and identity and the idea of going forward. Whether you agree with the courses or not, principally, you are setting up people to be banned for expressing their opinion and asking the government to step in to do this. I wonder where the hypocrisy could be, Sargon. I wonder. Again, I feel that I need to uh, preface this because some people are going to think, oh, you're attacking his character. You're attacking his character to make a point. No. This is pointing out the fact that Sargon of Akkad, Carl Benjamin, likes to use snippets of information to try and push his agenda to make him sound better than what he is rather than actually just being himself and being genuine and actually just letting his ideas, which he says is the way to meritocracy, remember, is the way to be. Yeah, he's always trying to find an angle. He's either the victim or he's always the one that's trying to be victimising. So, what is it, Sargon? Is it a case of you need to be a victim, you need to victimise, or is it a case of you just don't want to be you? You don't want to be judged on what you're capable of. You want to be judged on what you think the world should be by putting a front up. So let's see where this level of hypocrisy and blatant lying gets you, shall we? Well, you'd be surprised, actually. Um, my dad isn't white. Mm -hmm. So my granddad wasn't white. And he was a black man in the 60s who married my white grandmother. My grandfather wasn't a quarter black. He was fully black. My grandfather's black on my dad's side. And to further compound matters for the chubby Swindonian, an even bigger lie was about to be exposed. With a self-admitted black grandfather, Carl's parents should surely exhibit some signs of African heritage. However, following a series of home videos uploaded to Sargon's channel, it was crystal clear both his parents were incredibly light-skinned. Oh shit! Oh shit! Almost trying to play identity politics to give you a free pass to say well I can say these things because my granddad's black my dad's half black or quarter black or three quarters black or, or whatever the fuck that he wanted to use it as but turns out turns out that his dad is um, pretty white by the way that is Sargon of Akkad's dad yep that rhymed so what do you guys think does he look black is he black now, let me be honest, that doesn't necessarily mean just because of the colour of his skin that he doesn't have any kind of black heritage, but it's the bit afterwards that we need to watch. So let's, let's carry on, shall we? Big blackness. Oh. So, how did you find it? Yeah, I'll tell you what, with a bit of practice, that could be good fun, couldn't it? Could it? When pushed on this, Sargon backpedalled, claiming to not know exactly what race his grandfather was, before admitting to what he called a slip-up. But Carl had reiterated the same assertion time and time again, only to have now been comically exposed due to his own stupidity. It was generally felt that Sargon's penchant for convenient duplicity, in framing the narrative in his favour, reduced him to the same leftist tactics he'd made a career from criticising. I don't know what race he actually was because it was never something i really cared about and like i mean he was a very dark-skinned man but i don't think he was sub-saharan because he had straight hair but he's he, like i mean if you see my dad he, he's actually got remarkably pale skin at the moment because he doesn't really go out in the sun much but when he was younger he used to go out in the sun quite a lot he was really dark wow guys wow when you stand out in the sun he got really dark really dark like 
oh my god, I didn't realise that if you stood outside that your skin colour changed. Almost like a form of um, tanning that goes on. Interesting. So, he's supposed to have some sort of heritage of being black, but has no heritage of sub-Saharan African descent. Hmm. None whatsoever. Not like people that have moved to other countries and got it that way, but no section of sub-Saharan African descent. Hmm. I got a thinky face. I wonder what that could mean. Uh, so now we're getting into some more interesting stuff. To the point of... I was actually quite interested in the internet at this point in time. I was coming around at this sort of time, so I was very interested. And following this, I already had my preconceptions of Sargon thinking that he was a good bloke, a good man, and whatnot. But, yeah, some of the evidence that has come back doesn't doesn't look great. Let me put it that way. It doesn't look great. Yeah. So... To preface this, there was a gentleman called CRP, or Coach Red Pill, and he was having sort of uh, internet altercations with uh, Crowton T, and Crowton T's server and everything else like that, and it turns out that Crowton T, from some backing of other people, found out Coach Red Pill's docs, which technically was in the docs, but is a docs, but was in the docs. Whatever on that one. But more of a case of it's the Andal handed tactics. Which Sargon of Akkad himself said that he would never do anything like that. And has always been against that. Doxing and that sort of identitarianism and whatnot. Or the way of trying to force people to run away from the internet. Because you know their true identity and whatnot. Me, myself, I'm obviously here. People know who I am, but that's not the issue with me. Um, my views are mine, and uh, that's simply what it is. But with Sargon, he seems to change his views very, very quickly and changes them on a dime, which is one of the reasons, especially in this instance, when I was actually pulling away and pulling away really quickly, especially with this instance, and finding out the fact that Sargon knew, as Coach Redpool would say, Sargon knew. I don't know why you are engaging in the sort of culture war tactics the SJWs engage in against the alt right. And I've said to you repeatedly, privately, that you shouldn't do this. This is a waste of time and it's not a good thing to do. And you are doing it anyway, so I'm, I'm curious to know why you're doing it. I, I really don't see the advantage. I, I have to ask, what exactly do you mean with culture war tactics? Well, you know, what? digging up people's pasts, trying to... What? Sort of smear them to make them look bad, things like that. I have no idea what you're talking about. Come on. No, I, I honestly have no idea what come you're talking about. Come on, man, come on. No, you have to give me a specific example. Hello? Okay, like, finding Coach Red Pill's past. Like, th this sort of thing. Like, digging up... Who, who are the other people? There are, there are other people that you've... Um, what the fuck? You know, you've been digging stuff up on them and stuff, and it's like, I don't, I don't see the point in any of that. Not only were Kraut and Sargon aligned in their efforts as skeptics to take down the alt-right, they were also close friends. In fact, such was the strong foundation of their platonic bond that Kraut admitted to having shared the Coach Red Pill docs with Carl the Don Sargoni. I, I have to tell you something, Jeff. I, I shared the things that I got on Coach Red Pill with Sargon of Akkad. Yeah, so? And he's now accusing so me of doing SJW tactics. That's not SJW tactics, that's fucking, that's vetting, that's vetting somebody who's talking as a public figure. Exactly. That's something every news organization does, that's something every fucking YouTuber does. That's absolutely fucking preposterous. The only reason why anybody gives a shit about any of this is because they're positioning themselves as being persecuted. This is, that is a fucking SJW tactic. Oh, I'm a persecution. Oh, I'm a persecution. This right. is why it's wrong. And although it is not yet clear exactly how involved in Kraut's server Sargon was, they were clearly in regular dialogue on the subject. A Skype conversation between the two had Sargon feebly request that Kraut not act, advice that was evidently ignored. 
As Coach Red Pill himself explains, likely inside a circle of superfluous DSLRs, Carl should have done more. From the way that they're talking, it's as if Sargon and Kraut had been speaking before. So when I said in yesterday's video that um, perhaps as early as December 11th, Sargon was aware of what was going on, we're gonna have to push that date a lot farther back. Now we're moving into the territory of November, okay? So Sargon and Akkad knew for several weeks what uh, Kraut and T was up to. So now that we've got that little bit out of the way and some background and some history and some context, or as the left would say, some nuance, I just wanted to make a quick preface, a quick point. Um, for all of the video clips that you see in this video up to this point are all from Porcelain's video, A Documentary of Sargon of Akkad, or as it's called, The Sargon of Akkad Effect. Now, it's in the description box down below. Please go and watch the video. It's an amazing video. It really is good. And no, I'm not being paid. Though, Porcelain, hi. If you need, if you, if you want, you, you know, help him. Kind of. I'm not really. Never mind. But... Now I'm going to move on to the more political side of his victimhood complex that seems to be around at this moment in time. Especially considering that he would go around and blame people for his or their victimizing of him to make him the victim, that everybody's against him no matter what, which is kind of the reason why I wanted to show this at the beginning. It's just his own doing you can't go around calling people white you-know-what. You can't go around and call them just you-know-what. Beginning with N. I'm not getting my channel bloody taken down when I'm doing a criticism of someone. I have no problem with the word being said. But I'm not that stupid. Yet. Yet. I probably will be at some point. But not yet. So these are the things that Sargon of Akkad seems to do himself. That they try and get him into these corners. And Porcelain actually says this in the video himself very well. But I want to do it in my own way because I'm actually doing it from a different way. He's going against Sargon as it is and pointing out historical and, well, internet historical facts about Sargon of Akkad. Where I'm giving my opinion of what I feel about the person on a personal level and how it's going to affect UKIP. Which was the preface of this video. And yes... I've taken over 20 minutes to get to the point of showing you the character references that I think that make Sargon of Akkad, should we say, a garbage human being. And I honestly do believe that. The reason why I do believe that is not because I dislike Sargon. It's not because I don't think that he does good work. He does do good work. I'm not going to dispute that. I'm never going to dispute that. He does do good work when he thinks about it. And when he actually goes off and does things by himself. Going into the realm of politics with the checkered past that he has. Though again, to preface the point, and I know people are still going to try and point this out to me. But I do understand that the things that he said generally were said in jest. But if you go around and you're having a thought experiment with the idea of child grooming and is it okay for child sex and whatnot... It's going to get clipped out of context. You should know this going into politics. If you're going to call somebody a garbage human being, sorry Anita, but if you're going to call somebody anything called Jewish names or whatever, then you're going to get called out for it. Your Twitter bans are going to come back up on the reason why you got banned. These are the things that are going to come up and these are the things that are not going to actually affect you, Sargon, because you don't care. That's the point that I'm really trying to make and trying to preface here. You don't care that it affects the party as it is. You don't care that it's actually changing the way that politics is run. And yes, I am giving you a massive ego boost here, and I am stroking your fucking ego at this point, mate. But all of these things that are coming down on you are not fully coming down on you. Because by proxy, you are being protected by UKIP. Because the real target is not demigrating you. Because you've done that yourself, you dick. But it's actually going after UKIP as a whole. And trying to completely and utterly discredit UKIP for what it is. And supposedly, in general, I don't know, I'm not in the inner circle or sanctum. But supposedly it's supposed to be for British liberal values. Something that I myself am very proud to be part of. I'm quite happy with those values. 
immigration, all that sort of stuff. I'm very, very happy with that. You just check my channel, you'll be able to see that sort of stuff. There are instances where I disagree and disagree vehemently in general, but that's the point of political discourse, to disagree, to change, to formulate ideas. But let's get back to the actual point of Sargon and how it is affecting UKIP. So overall, we're gonna watch a quick video of Sargon of Akkad being announced as the MEP candidate for UKIP in the Southwest. Let's, let's just watch this and see how this is going to be beneficial to UKIP, shall we? Now, there wouldn't be European elections if the referendum decision had been honoured. But of course, we know that it hasn't. As Kirsten said, it's been betrayed. The democratic decision of 17.4 million people has been deliberately and cynically betrayed by the political class. And this is what my point was, that Jared Batten at this moment in time is going through the actual process. Now, whether you voted remain or leave, it doesn't matter at this point in time. You had a democratic exercise of the people voting on a decision for the whole of the country and for the whole of the union. By whatever measurement that you want to use, leave won. Yes, narrowly, but they won, which means that the choice that the country made was to leave the European Union. Now, Jared Batten here is making an extremely great case at this moment in time, at least, for how democracy does not seem to be actually being implemented by the supposed Democrats of the two-party system that we have in the UK. Amazing that this is going on, and this is what the whole news conference was supposed to be about. But yeah, it turns into Sargon Avakad trying to massage his ego and trying to get his point across and trying to steal the limelight for himself. In the face of tremendous organised Remain propaganda from the mainstream media, from all of the main, so-called main political parties, and from the institutional establishment, including, of course, President Obama, who even went to the trouble of making a special visit to the UK to threaten us in our own country and tell us how to vote. Again, Batten being very, very similar to how Nigel Farage would speak and making sure that it's about a particular issue, which is about the undemocratic process that seems to be happening at this moment in time for the governments and from the institutions from the media so on and so forth and yes they're all opinions and yes it's all perspective but that's the point that's what the point of this press conference was was to introduce people that were going to the european union to vote and to change on european legislation that's what this was about that Jared Batten was actually alluding to and setting up was the fact of that they want to fight against the people to make sure that they give a democracy. And by the people, I mean the people that have been apparently elected to actually represent people and people like Anna Subri leaving their constituents from the mandate in which they were elected from to try and pursue their own ideas and their own ideals not very democratic. In fact, very authoritarian. But hey, that was the point of the press conference. Let's see what Sargon of Akkad does instead. There was no question about rape, that's a lie, and I'm not going to accept that framing. No, I'm not accepting okay, that framing. I said I wouldn't either. That's not a threat, it's not a, it's not a promise of action, it's actually just a thing. Okay, and I'm not going to be apologising for my crimes against political correctness, I hate political okay. correctness. So, a bit of context beforehand, obviously Sargon at this moment in time, and still is, is getting a lot of miscommunication and a lot of misinformation from tweets that have happened years ago. Now again, I'm not saying what he did was right, I'm not saying what he did was wrong. The point is that just because that he's now being forced with a question, which is something that the media feel that they have over him, which, by the way, the media are allowed to do that, Otherwise, you're banning their freedom of speech and you're banning their ideas and what they can do to ask you questions, Mr. Sargon of Akkad. But, yes, you can, as he did, point out that it's a mischaracterization, it's misinformation. But what Sargon has done, and is doing, is showing 
that he's letting things get to him. He's showing an emotion. And yes, I know that some people would say, yeah, but I want my politicians to have a form of emotion. Fine. Are you the majority? Are you the ones that he should be trying to coax into joining UKIP or voting for UKIP or voting for him in his section and area? Is that what he should be doing? Or should he be explaining the reasons and the context behind the tweet, being sensible behind the explanation and actually showing where Jess Phillips has even said that she wasn't even bothered by it, she was playing with her children. But you know, none of that. This is Sargon's moment to shine on a massive platform, on a massive stage with the national media present. So what does he go and do? He goes and shows himself right up by being an emotional, manipulative, and in my opinion, aggressive manner. And I don't think that the actual news reporter herself warranted any of that. And no, not because she's a fucking woman, but because she was asking a question that her editors probably wanted her to ask. Is that all you can think about? We've come here to talk about the European elections. All you can do is talk about a tweet from three years ago, which I wouldn't make, I wouldn't condone. He can then answer it, that it in the context that it was done. But that's all you want to talk about. Our country's future is on the line. Are we going to be part of the European Union or are we going to leave? And that is all you can talk about. And the vast mass of people out there couldn't care less. And Jared Batten there making my point for me yet again. The fact is that because the Sargon of Akkad, and yes, I do understand Sargonites, that it was a case of the media trying to smear against him to stop him from running, I do understand. But because that he is running with his political past and with the upstarts that have happened to him and what he has done him fucking self, is now hurting the prospects of UKIP. Even in this announcement of his grand opening, so to speak, as a running MEP participant, the whole press conference has been against Sargon of Akkad and the fact of him doing the tweet, whether it was right, wrong or whatever. But the story is not what UKIP's policies are. Not the fact that they're fighting against the actual idea of keeping democracy alive and making sure that the actual people that represent us are supposed to be representing us. And they are not. And because of Sargon of Akkad's, and it is him, unfortunately, and his stupidity in previous years gone by, that is now stopping UKIP from participating and moving forward. That's the problem. It is going back to the point of, yes, and the media are smearing against him, but it's always back to the problem that these problems come from Sargon. And no, nobody's squeaky's clean. Nobody would ever suggest that people should be or are. But the point is that the way that he's acting, the way that he's doing against it, is not saying anything that's going against political or po politics in general. He's now going to the point of saying that he's being victimised against it. It's his problem. It's his... Everybody's against him. Why can't people just let him be? The problem is, if you believe in freedom of speech, you have to support your enemy's freedom of speech. Otherwise, it's not free speech. It's your speech. And that's the problem that you have when you fight for free speech, Sargon. And that's the reason why I do fight for it. Because I do want my enemies and I do want the people that I loathe to have that free speech. Because it means that I will have it. These are the processes and thoughts that go through my head. And don't seem to go through your head to their logical conclusion anymore, mate. So here we go again. I think we've covered it. I you see, this is this. I've explained to you. I explained. To you. you asked me three times. I answered you, which was that I don't condone a joke or a remark made some by by somebody three years ago on Twitter. Now, if you held everybody to account for every remark they'd ever made in their life, which was stupid, unthought out uncondonable there wouldn't be any journalists in this room would there so proving my point for the last aspect that the whole thing for sargon and ukip has been a one-way street really all of the publications and all the publicity and everything else like that has been against ukip and has been promoting sargon i find that very interesting that sargon's names everywhere 
and it's UKIP that's underneath. So UKIP gets the demigration from what's happening from Sargon, but Sargon is the one that gets all the exposure. Sargon is the one that gets good or bad publicity. Now, I'm not trying to say that I want UKIP to have all the publicity that Sargon's having at this minute in time, because it's not good publicity. It's destroying his character. Yeah, lots of people are subscribing to him, and fair play, go do what they want to do. There is a message out there for people. There always has been with Sargon. Sargon speaks to a lot of people, speaks a lot of truth to a lot of people as well. And I support him in his aspects and his crusade to be able to do that. That's his choice, and I believe in his right and his choice to be able to do that. The problem I have, though, is that this has only been looked at from Sargon's point of view. The whole aspect of what's going on with Sargon all seems to be stemming, and everybody that's defending Sargon, which every right to, it's obviously a smear job, obviously, but everybody's defending Sargon. Nobody's taking the actual time to realise how much that this is going to damage UKIP. Now, there are correlations to be made. There was localised elections that happened very recently. Now, before I get into all of that and the connotations and the correlations that could stem from it, UKIP did not have a lot of local councillors to be able to put up, unfortunately, for UKIP. They didn't have a lot. So they lost a lot on that aspect along. If you don't have anybody to fill the seat, then you're not going to win the seat. So you're going to lose it. But the point that I wanted to make is the correlation is that there was such a drop, such a drop in UKIP support. Overall, there was such a drop in it. I can't help think that the correlation, not the causation, but the correlation has been the way that the media have portrayed Sargon and the way that the media have portrayed Sargon's reactions to everything as well. Because remember, Sargon's reaction to all of this has been, I'm the victim, I'm the victim, I'm the victim. Fair. I don't suppose that you're not in this aspect. There is definitely a smear job going on. Can't deny that. But it's a big but. It's a big but. The problem is that with all of the victimization that seems to be put your way to turn you into a victim, so you have the victimhood complex, so you're the one that's searching in that for validation from other people and making sure that you have the right of way, so to speak, in the political life. Seems that you're hurting you, Kip. It seems that every time that you go and do something, Sargon, when you joined something, when you created Liberalists, when you tried to did your computer game, when you try and join any sort of form of political parties, you seem to destroy it. Any time that any momentum is building on a particular movement, you destroy it. I can't help think, is there a reason behind that? And yeah, I know the more cynical people in the background will be going, SJWs, SJWs, which, sure, maybe they do have a, a profound effect. Maybe it's the establishment that's completely not against you. Maybe it's the government itself that is trying to censor you yourself, Sargon. And yet, doesn't that sound a little bit conspiratorial? Doesn't that sound that the world's out to get you? Doesn't that sound just a little bit like victimhood? Just a little bit? Maybe a word of advice for you keeping itself. And that is, maybe you should drop Sargon of the Cand. And no, not because I think that he's being smeared against. And no, not because I believe the stories. And no, not because that I think that he's a victim and he should go into hiding and everything else like that. Or the opposite way where I think he should fight the good fight and continue to try and stick it to the man and prove everybody wrong. No, he's in politics. It's not American politics. It's party politics. It's not individualism. It's not individual politics. Now, if you were in America, Mr. Rakad, then maybe you'd be able to win people over with your charismaticness. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, some people say that they use you to go to sleep. I'm not saying anything on that one. But it is funny that you go against all this idea of collectivization, collectivism, and everything else like that. And I'm with you for the most part. But then you don't even understand the basic aspects of British politics which is not the individuals that are in the party that shapes the party. It's the party that's supposed to shape the individuals in it. Because what you do that is for you 
affects the party. Affects what goes on and what the connotations are derived from the party. So if they are supporting you, which they have every right to do, by the way, then all they're doing is saying that we endorse you. We support what you say. For people that are ill-informed and for people that do not want to go and check the stories or fact-check anything, they will believe the stories. They will honestly believe all of the stories. All that does is harm UKIP. All that does is harm whatever party that you would have been involved with. So your best bet would have been to have joined Labour or the Lib Dems. Because at least then, your reverse Midas touch would have actually done some good rather than destroying one of two only parties that are actually interested in democracy. So I'm actually going to be revoking my membership of UKIP and at least for these localised European elections, if you could say they're localised, I'm going to be voting for the Brexit party. They have more of a chance. And that all stems down to you, my friend. And again, definitely massaging your ego, mate. But you cause that much of a problem. You are actually a hindrance in the causes that you fight for. Rather than actually fighting for anything and changing anything, you destroy it. Well, that being said, guys, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. Sorry it's been a bit long. But please like, share, and subscribe. Share as much as possible. And Jared Batten, if for some reason and somehow you're listening, consider it. Is your access to social media and the platform that Sargon of Akkad is so important to you that you're willing to let the people that physically vote for you in the country against... Sargon of Akkad's less than a million people. Doesn't seem like a good payoff, does it? The maths doesn't really add up there. Mr. Bobmin's fucking off. Just have a look, mate. Just decide for yourself what you actually think is going to be beneficial to the party. Because I can guarantee you, this isn't it.